Hi, my name is Peter. I want to tell you my story from a year ago. Are you ready to watch? I only remember a little. I was working all morning. I got really hungry. I was thinking, what should I eat? I thought of Panda Express. Perfect. I was waiting to my lunchtime. Perfect timing. And then I walked outside. I was about to get on my bike and I saw my dad look at me angry and he said, don't. Don't. I was taken aback, looked at my bike, looked at my dad, but he was gone. I don't know, I was confused because he passed away in 2009. I just had to get my food. I don't know, I was confused. So I got on my bike, I rode away. I was a little nervous. I don't know what was going on. That's all I remember. On my way to um, for my lunch, we passed by the first time we saw his bike in front of the construction truck. Um, I saw Peter's bike on the road, and Peter, I couldn't see Peter, so um, we went to get our food. Um, I called my manager um, to make sure Peter was at work, so I didn't feel comfortable eating at the restaurant. So when Peter came back, I got dropped off where the accident was. Our manager went to the site. Um, at that time, I was already like not trying to panic Carla up, so um, I just sent her a message. I FaceTimed Peter, he didn't answer. I texted Peter, he didn't answer. Uh, I spoke to the construction worker, the only one that was there. He said if I knew the person, and I told him that he was my coworker. And after that, as soon as we spoke to the police officer, he mentioned that it was a really bad accident, that he was coughing up blood, and he was had gotten sent to the hospital. Peter texted me and said, do you know where Peter is at? I was confused and I said, I thought he's with you. So I called him on FaceTime. No answer. I texted him. No answer. I slowly um, told her what was going on. I was like impossible because Peter is a wonderful biker and so many people have the same bike that Peter had. I was in denial that we talked it more. At one point, I just had to drive to Carson. We were waiting by the receptionist because they wouldn't let us see Peter. So um, we were just waiting for Carla. When I arrived to the hospital, I saw Caesar right there and we talked it. He told me that they won't let us in because we are not his family. Then I went to the lady on the desk and told her I am his fiance. The only way I can see him, so they gave me a room number. Then I met the security guard and asked if I can see Peter. He told me that I can't see him and then I asked why. He told me to wait so he can get the doctor. So I waited. The doctor came to me. She looked nervous and had blood on her jacket. I said, well, he's fine. He's sleeping. He's just wrapped up. I'm like, okay, I just want to see him, please. Then she said, okay, just give me 15 minutes, just 15 minutes. Then the finally doctor told me that I'm ready to go in. I went in and first thing I saw was a lot of doctors around him. I was puzzled and I saw him laying there, blood on his face. He has no face, he's just swollen. I was like, no, 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 it can't be, it just can't be. Then I saw his tattoo on his chest. My heart just broken in a million pieces. I cried so hard and I thought of his family. My sister arrived at my mom's house. My sister, my mom, and I were chatting. A few minutes later, my husband called me. He said, Author's been in an accident. 
I said, what do you mean he's been in an accident? He said, I don't know. My brother just called me and told me somebody called and gave a number. You should call them. I took the phone number. I Googled and it came out to be um, Harbor UCLA Medical Center. And I told her, I'm like, this is Peter's sister. What happened? Can you tell me um, what's going on? She said, I can't give you any information. The only thing I can tell He's on a life support. They told me he has broken bones and everything is really bad. They said he might not make it. <sighs> but my sister didn't tell me and my mom. She said, accident, just broken arms and legs. My sister, my mom, and I rushed off and left. When we arrived to the hospital, the nurse won't let us come in. They told us to wait, but mom said, no, please, let us just stay in just for one minute. One minute. They said, okay, just for one minute, we need to take him to the MRI. We went in. We saw a lot of people laying down in a coma. And I felt something's not right. It felt so weird. And I was looking for Peter, and I saw him, but it doesn't look like Peter. I was in shock, just seeing laying down there, just a lot of blood, and not talking, just laying there. My mom was crying and spoke to the doctor. Will he be okay? Will he make it? The doctor wasn't sure. He can't say yes. More likely 50-50 chance. We were speechless but my mom cried out of control. My sister and my brother-in-law arrived at the same time. They heard my mom crying out of control. She can't stop crying. Well, we saw him there, um, all bloody, and um, he wasn't talking, nothing, just laying there. It was just awful. Like I said, his face was all broken, bruised, bloody, br blood dripping everywhere. We went crazy. We started calling here and there to find out what happened. The doctor came in to see us. We were like, what's going on? The doctor said he went in a coma. I felt broken, scared that he was in a coma. I feel I was so scared that my mom said my my uh, my uncle was in the hospital. Then we were so scared. I just seen him laying down there, pretty much not doing anything. That's not the Peter I know. The Peter I know is very active. He won't stay still. He won't listen. He's hard headed. It was really hard to see your happy, active brother in the hospital bed not knowing if he's going to make it or not. He has a tube in his brain because he has so much blood in his brain. That's why it needs to drain the blood. He has a ventilator because he can't breathe on his own. He's relying on a breathing machine. He has a lot of IV in his arms. He has a feeding tube. My mom talked to the nurse and the doctor to see what happened to him. They said that he had a bad fever. They decided to put ice blanket on him. My mom was worrying. She didn't want him to get a cold. So my mom took away, but the nurse put it back. The doctor warned us that his body was started to swollen. His hands swollen. His feet swollen. His head is swollen. We came in. I talked to the nurse about my brother to see how he is, to see if he's awake yet or any news yet. I stood there and watched Peter, and I saw him trying, trying to open his eyes, and his eye opened for the first time. It happened to Amy. Peter's awake. Peter's awake. I was in shock, and I told her to get my mom, please. So I ran to get mom and told her, please, hurry, hurry. And his family thought something bad happened, but no, this time, 
good thing is happening. I asked Peter, hi, are you okay? He said no and showed his tear. It made me feel so helpless and at the same time I feel so bad for him. My mom came to Peter and said, hi, I love you. And Peter just staring. I hate to see you laying there, but thank God he's awake. He's gonna be okay. When Peter woke up, well, we got very excited. I felt so happy. He's awake. He is alive. That gave us hope that he's going to be okay. His guardian angel looked up, up uh, looked up upon him, and he made it. And I'm very thankful to have him alive with us. Days later. My brother was very horrible, out of control, confused. He was in so much pain. He can't stay awake. A nurse gave him a lot of drugs to keep him calm. When the doctors came and told us that he's going to have some mental problems or... Peter doesn't know who I was. He didn't know his own sister, his own mom, or any family. There's maybe like a 1% chance, and if he does, he's not going to be the same person. They said people like this that have came into the hospital are likely not to get out. The doctor talked to my mom. They want to send my brother to rehab because he was out of control, very weak, can't walk nothing so the doctor talked to the nurse to call every rehab to find the availability to, and they found a place in Long Beach my mom said okay she signed all the papers and then ready to transfer at night like at midnight my mom and I went in we were confused they don't have a, a wrist restraint or a bed that has rails my mom and I decided to stay with him his mood changes, he, him constantly forgetting who he is, who we are. He can't walk by himself, can't eat by himself. able to communicate. He keep complaining, I want water, I want water, but I can't give him water because he didn't get pneumonia. He kept complaining about wanting to go home. He cussed at me, yelled at me, he yelled at his mom, at Amy and everyone for no reason. It was very tough, and in rehab too, seeing the way he was struggling. He became an angry person. We thought we were never going to have him back. He was always going to be that way. One month later, I woke up again, the real me. From August 17, I don't remember anything at all, nothing. I know, it doesn't make sense. I was in heavy drugs, I believe. That night, I woke up again in the hospital. I looked around, I was confused. Then I saw my sister right there. She looked at me and she said hi. I asked her, am I in the hospital? She said, yeah, you're in rehab. I asked her, why? What happened? She said, you were in an accident, you were in a coma, you were in the hospital, now you're in rehab. And I said, no, 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 no. I was confused. I was like, no, no. Then, shit, I remember I just bought a motorcycle. And I was like, fuck, shit. My sister said, yeah, I have the picture to prove it. She looked for it to show me. I was looking at the pictures and videos, and I told her, stop. I need to go to the bathroom. So I got up, and I was like, shit, I couldn't walk. My sister and my mom held me and helped me to walk to the bathroom. And then I told them, I'm fine. I can go by myself. Close the door. And I saw myself in the mirror. My hair. My eyes. I couldn't see. My beard. I'm so skinny. What happened? That's not me. That's not you. My sister came in and said, stop. You're fine. Don't worry. You'll be okay. I freaked out. I wanted to know what happened to me. My throat. My stomach. What happened? What's going on? My sister didn't know what to say. She said, stop. It's okay. You'll be okay. You're fine. 
I was lost. Just the worst feeling ever. Worst feeling of my life. Later on, my therapist came in and did an eating test, but I failed every test. I got depressed at the same time, I also got tired easily. I slept every 20 minutes, I got really tired and I was weak. Later on, my trainer came in and helped me get my strength back. I did one shoulder workout because my other one was broken, no excuse. I was improving and my therapist came back. Tested me again and I passed, they told me, good job. That I can eat now. Finally I can eat. They changed my trach to make me use it less. It was better. No more thick trach. Now it's a smaller trach. My mom talked to the rehab manager. They got permission if we could take Peter out of the rehab. The manager told us no because it's too early. We have to wait because of his stretch. They don't want him to get an infection. They told us to wait for a few weeks, so we waited. My mom talked to the manager again and asked the same question. The manager said, okay, okay, just a three hour limit. We can take him out on a Sunday. They decided to take me out. I was excited. I felt like I just got out of jail. Wow. We felt so happy that he was finally able to go to the beach. Catch up with family. Running around, playing with the kids, with the sand, going in the water. That was the most happiest Peter I ever saw since the accident. Did you know the doctor told my mom that I would have mental problems? That's why he sent me to rehab. But that's not true, I'm back to normal. He told my family I would be in the wheelchair forever, but two weeks later I stood up. He was wrong again. Then I asked the doctor when will I go home. He said, one year or more. But I went home two months later. Before the motorcycle accident, I was big, fit, in good shape. I worked so hard, I went to the gym every day. After the accident, I went from big to skinny out of the blue. I looked at my weight. I was 120 or 125. I was disappointed because I worked so hard for many years. For nothing. I was about to give up. And then I remembered the doctor told me that the gym saved my life. Because I had a lot of muscles to protect me. That's why I lived. That motivated me even more. I told myself I'll be back. And I did.
Wow, I'm back in good shape. I always go to the gym because I want to look better than you? No, no, I go for me. I want to be a better person than I was before. Hey, I want to tell you something. I want you people to believe in yourselves. Work hard, stay positive, dedicated. You're allowed to scream. You're allowed to cry. But never, never give up. Never. If I can, you can too. Thank you.